we'll so we'll talk just a little bit about, about fearless fun and answer any questions you may have or take any con, con uh, comments that you may have and then we'll go and join amy perfect okay she's going to join later so fearless fund is being sued it could have been any fund they're they're very specifically i think they chose them because of proximity and because um fearless fund is really good at marketing and um it, it's just it's weak you know it's just weak but they're suing them for i guess racism <laughs> which is outrageous and funny we all understand how ridiculous it is but it is serious in that um i think even yesterday something like the sba i think the sba small business administration stopped um taking applications for a certain grant that was uh, particular to um uh, founders of color because not because they wanted to but because while this is happening, they need to, they have to, right? So it has implications across the board for a lot of people. Apprentice says it's also whack, correct? <laughs> that is the uh, professional and official term for it. And so it has these implications and we've seen what happened with the same group when it came to affirmative action in colleges. So it's not, it's laughable, but it is serious and has implications doesn't it makes us only stronger i think it makes our case even stronger of why we're doing what we're doing um and i say we i mean all the found all the the companies and the funds that are trying to change the disparity in funding this is why it you know they kind of prove their own point with this um let's see what this is saying do you want to say that out loud danish no, sure. So in response to the Supreme Court ruling a few weeks back on affirmative action, um, I think Harvard's president issued this tongue in cheek statement saying how we'll thoroughly comply with it because the Supreme Court did say how race impacted one's upbringing, one's background could still be used in the admission process, which still mm -hmm. gets to the same thing. It's just a bit of nuance and how you get there. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's mo most people are on the right side of history with this. Most people are get it. And in, in fact, even when I, um, I what I thought was interesting, it, it's like even in this room, it, it's OK if you have a dissenting opinion, actually, or if you have a question of like the nuance of what's being called the question. I won't agree with you, but it's OK if you feel that way, because I even in my uh, Instagram comments, there were people who either you would think are allies or are people of color themselves who are like, but, <laughs> but isn't it discrimination? Um, because, you know, if we, I think it's important to be intellectually honest. I think it's important to not just be of the crowd and say, well, that's crazy, that's bogus, to be intellectually honest and to kind of break it down like maybe a lawyer would. So it's okay if you feel that way, but let's try to explain it you know, if you, if you do feel that way. Yes. So Denise. So I was thinking about this in the grander scheme, right? With the fact that they're going after fearless fun. In my work that I do in clinical trials, we're really pushing because the FDA has come out with representation is needed in our clinical studies because there's a lack of representation. And it's making me think about not only with this attack on fearless fun, but some of the other things that have been going on right now with erasing history or certain topics in school, we're seeing DEI programs getting slashed across the board, that this is something that's not just limited to one industry or another, and that we're really starting to see the impact. Mm -hmm. And I think that what this will ha what will happen with Fearless Fund can really end up being a slippery slope in a few other industries as well. And Although, you know, some would say like in the clinical trial space, oh, well, there's a law that's been signed that says representation is needed. Affirmative action, you know, we've had a few other things that have been written into, into law that are now really being challenged and are being ripped away. Like there were actual judicial rulings that have been put into place for that. So 
I'm I'm looking at it in a bigger picture. It's scary to think that for many of us who are in the DEI space, whether from a scientific perspective or an investment perspective, are under attack right now. Um, and not only are you under attack, but it's very draining. And a lot mm -hmm. of people are, are saying, I need a mental break. I need a physical break from this. Mm -hmm. And I think the implications of that is it's, it's, it's just the fact that they're looking at it from a race and a race and ethnicity perspective. This could be opened up to other areas as oh, well. Things. Right. Yeah. So other rights are being impacted as well. So this is beyond. It's just like as you think about identity as a whole, so many different areas are being impacted. So for me, it's scary to look at it. I'm not surprised by it at all because of how we've been trending in this direction. Mm -hmm. But I'm also thinking too that we have to make sure we take the blinders off and say, if you don't support in this area, they will be coming mm -hmm. after you in these other areas as well. So 100 percent 100 percent Yeah, so much comes to mind. Any any anyone else have any thoughts or questions as you've been thinking about it, looking into it? Jay? Yeah, I put this in the oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, we'll yeah, go to Jay uh, first and then Brittany. Uh, sorry that I'm late, but um, you know, one thing that immediately came to mind for me was the conversation around um the bakery that they allowed to discriminate against LGBTQ individuals and couples and all that. And yet then they turn around and actually attack um, you know, Fearless Fund, which is is trying to uplift black women. Um, so when I first saw the ruling on the bakery's uh, behalf, I thought, oh, man, this is a slippery slope also, right? Because first it's, you know, we don't have to uh, serve you because it's our creative, you know, creative work products, right? And how many other areas does that translate to? How do we define creative work products, right? Like, where does the law get drawn? I mean, the line get drawn, excuse me. And so I think that what we've seen, what I believe we've seen is the systematic dismantling of some of the gains that we've actually gotten on several different fronts over the last, let's say, decade approximately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that all, I say all of us, all of us need to wake up um, as far as, you know, first they came for, they came for trans rights, they came for LGBTQ rights, they came for Black rights, they came for women's rights. And it seems like little pockets, but in the grand scheme of thing, now they're not teaching the, edu you know, education on some of these things. I think it's it's a lot larger. Um, so the the response on our part has to be stronger. Jay, didn't you know that slavery wasn't all that bad? It had its merit. Yeah. Black people enjoyed it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Thinking is scary too, right? Very, very exactly. Very good point, uh, Jay. And then Brittany with an I. Yes. Um, so yeah, I was thinking if it's safer to just say underrepresented and overlooked in our investment thesis instead of specifying race. It seems mm -hmm. like specifying mm -hmm. race now is like mm -hmm. a bad thing. So it's just, just mm -hmm. safer to just use those terms underrepresented and overlooked. So I'm going to give you my unfiltered answer to that. My unfiltered answer is you are 100% right. It is safer to do that. And I think that the majority of the people here and doing the work should do that or could do that. Yes, and I don't, there's no, there's no gotcha there. I would say that there also needs to be some people and that I'll raise my hand to be one of them who says black, 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 blackity black, 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 all day long, um, even at the face of maybe getting shut down. Cause you better believe I'm thinking through what happens if Backstage shows, if I wake up one morning in the next few weeks and backstage is on somebody's list of being sued, of course it would be, it's possible. What do I do then? What is best for everyone? And my take on it today without legal advice and, without, and with an asterisk next to it is that um, I will continue to say exactly what I've been saying for a decade. But if everybody did that, we wouldn't get far. And if everybody took the safe route, which I don't think is the wrong route, I just think it is safe as you described it, safer, then we wouldn't get anywhere. So we need both agitating the system. So it's a very, really, really smart um, observation, Brittany. It's like what Danish was just talking about, how it's like, there's a wink, you know, there's a way around things. If you're going to be foolish, it was that if you're a clown, I'm a clown. Right. If you're going to if you're going to do that, we're going to do that. 
there's a way. Prentice, thank you, Brittany. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you can hear me. You know, when I think about this, you know, I come from a, a, a political lens, you know, I'm just clear that it's, it's all about power at the end of the day. You know, part of what these decisions are meant to do is to strip our, our uh, well, uh, and obscure our understanding that these decisions and these changes, it's about rebalancing power. And so mm -hmm. they're trying to make it about other things and like, oh, well, I feel just like being prejudiced or having privilege and all those things are real things in the world. But the thing is what discrimination is, is prejudice plus power, the ability mm -hmm. to enact change. And so we have to be clear that this is actually a power struggle in the world, that because we have grown tremendously in our ability to have more power in our communities, that this is the reaction to that, that they're trying to use the case law to reverse our sort of civil rights. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, that's the kind of thing I think about in, 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 this, in every arena, like the, 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 sh the shitty thing, frankly, about our case law in the U.S. is that it's all built on the same laws. So rather we're winning around abortion rights or LGBT protections or women's rights, all the same case law. And so if they take one thing down, they could take everything down because it's actually about power. So that's the thing that I'm clear about in, in knowing that that's what I'm fighting and I'm not gonna get confused about that. Rather than mm -hmm. they're trying to erase our history, which is another fascist sort of technique to erase people's ability to see themselves in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, can't, we can't sit down or fight or sit back on that. Who's voting for Prentice? Yep. <laughs> you got you got your your surrogates here. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. You just let us know, Prentice. You just let us know. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts or questions before we go into Amy's presentation? Beck? Yeah, so I guess when things like this come up. The, the question I always have is like, how do we do something? How do we get momentum? How do we bring our allies in and, and kind of stand up in a united way? Because I see lots of people, you know, on, on social media, unfortunately, majority of them already focus on underrepresented groups um, from VC kind of speaking up, but I don't see the majority um it probably won't be affected by this directly because they're gonna mm -hmm. fund the same old people that they always funded um i don't see them standing up and and mm. you know joining how do we bring them into the 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 fight against things like this how do we kind of coalesce mm. and i'm thinking more and more about your event in april um too how do we get a momentum of of folks to kind of join up and act in a united way because I think everybody kind of wants to do their bit but if we can mm -hmm. do those things in a in a planned structured way you kind of bring momentum and power with that yeah I think it's a fantastic question um and intent I know that there are several groups getting together inclu including the Cooley Cooley uh legal team and visible figures and different groups um, I, this reminded me, I'm going to put it in chat, see if it, I don't know if it'll, I don't know how to make things, um, link, but let's see if I can get this to work. So this is Ed Zimmerman, um, who was mentioned in, in the curriculum. He is our lawyer. He's our main lawyer at Lowenstein in New York and San Francisco. He leads the tech team there. They've done major, they did the WhatsApp and Facebook merger. They do major stuff. And uh, he wrote this to me yesterday that he wanted me to see these these two, and he wanted to ask how he could be helpful. White man wanted to ask how he could be helpful. I'm no longer on Twitter or X um, because unlike Elon, I will call it by its name that it's asked to be called. Um, I'm no longer on those platform on the platform, so I haven't even been able to see who is not speaking up, and so that's super interesting. You know, there are a few people speaking up, but most people that I've seen, you're right, are Black people in tech, in VC. Um, I am I am personally so jaded that I don't want to worry about the others who are not speaking up. I'm just taking note, like taking note. Um, and I also feel like 
anybody who comes in swooping in with the exception of someone like Ed, who is asking, how do we help? They will then become the hero in the story because they have a billion dollar fund and how, oh, they're so wonderful. How wonderful is this white man for speaking up for the lowly, you know? And so that happens time and time again. Um, so that's where I, I I appreciate the thought about the event. I feel like it's it's definitely we're still we're going to be talking about this. It probably will have even more implications by then. So certainly that can be incorporated into the event. But I think something now is is more. So what I one of the things too that to, to take into consideration is that I mentioned last week I'm an LP in in Fearless Fund, and so Fearless Fund is being directed by their legal team and their own decisions and there is an outpouring of help and offer for help but they have to play things a certain way in order for you know to 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 be within the law and also to be strategic and so part of what i'm doing is looking at that instruction from them um, I see a lot of people up in arms and getting ready to go and like, who are we fighting? I'm I'm right next to them, right? But they they know what they need the most, and I'm looking for that instruction. So I'm I'm here to help d disseminate that instruction once it comes out from them. That's kind of how I'm playing it. But at the same time, I didn't sign an I didn't sign an NDA. I didn't sign a. I'm not getting sued. I we can speak out all we want. And I think even asking that question is helpful. Um, and then and then what I would say is that Amy, as you go into your topic, you might have some insights just a little bit there because you work with these funds and you have in, in the past and kind of see it from that side. If you want, you can speak to it. Um, yeah, and then Amy, what is the topic for today before SPV. we close out? SPVs. Oh, this is this was one of the favorite topics on the on Teachable, y'all. Y'all were asking some questions about some SPVs, um, special purpose vehicles. So, as we close out, we we can talk about this more. So next week, what I want to do is, um, I want to hear from a few of you about your work and about what you want to do, what you've learned. You know, we'll have some presentation there. Nothing that you have to get super prepared for, unless you want to, you can certainly put together a deck and, and present it. But we want to hear from a few of you next week about what you're working on as we continue to, to, to grow as a, as a group here. Um, and then we can, if you want, anybody in this group can bring up the subject again uh, next week and we can talk more about it if something has happened since then as well. Um, I Again, like I said, there are several... So several people who are putting together things that they should do and having Zoom calls and doing the thing. Uh, and I appreciate them. I'm just personally thinking, let's kind of, let's see. But individually, if you want to do something, certainly you have my respect and, and um, support there. Okay. Amy, I'll throw it to you to Thanks transition. So. You know, I, I want to say two things quickly. One is um, I learned about the Fearless Fund issue, the lawsuit from you, Arlen, and your posts on Instagram. Mm. I didn't learn it from any post on LinkedIn or mm. anyone in the investment banking VC world that I've been networking into on LinkedIn. So that speaks volumes to me mm. about where I'm connected and where I need to look for more and better and different connections because I'm grateful to you for posting about it so that I could learn about it. But I'm also, you know, side-eyeing other folks for not having anything to say or even being aware mm -hmm. of the issue or, or finding it, you know, worthy of their attention. So the, um, what that says is that, you know, maybe those folks aren't the best connections for me, but that I need to do a better job mm -hmm. of networking and being out there and finding, you know, more diverse, more connected voices. And so it's been a wake up call to me for, for my yeah. network. We all can, we all can always. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, I may share, 
is any if I decide to share this clip of video, does anybody who spoke or anybody whose name is listed here have a problem with me sharing it widely? If you do, you can uh, email me and ask me not to, or ask me to kind of get you some sort of Photoshop if I can do that. Um, just put an but, emoji. In your face. <laughs> yeah, but I might I might just do that. Yeah, exactly. I might just do that just because I think you know some people don't know how to talk about it. Don't have anybody to talk about it with. Like we have this group. But some people don't, they're just like raging or they're confused or they're worried, but they don't have a, like an outlet. And so this could serve as, as something there. Okay, 